it's part of our, our series that we want to bring people from the community specifically now because the model is such a um, prevalent issue for our law community. So I, again, I'm planning. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
that I got high hell, strong. There's going to be different emotions because we feel everything. And so I kind of want to give the same talk that I did today here, even though I know a lot of you know of this movement, and a lot of you know, oh, this is my brother. Um, but I think it's important because what I've learned is every time I talk about the mom, I have to talk about the Moku Oha. This is what I shared with Kiki today. And um, it's what I share almost every day that I possibly can when I'm on the moment. And the reason why I do that is because once I learned this Moku Oha, I felt stronger in myself. More sure. I felt something old come back around to me. An older strength. Old courage. That's passed down from the kukuna. Because he mana koka right? We know this. And so when we say the names of the big and incredible and majestic elements and deities, gods that we descend from. Our cells remember that. Our DNA remembers that. That it ignites something old in a new time. And so I'm going to do the same thing here. Because I think that it matters how many times we say it. The more people that know and say in this moku oh how I feel like the stronger the protection of the mauna. <clears throat> Who he talks about, she talks about this a lot, about how we have an electromagnetic pulse that keeps us alive. And it's that force, that energy, that is sent out through our middle, that it has power to create, it has power to protect, it has power to knock over a building if it needs to, or a kupuna luna, because it's an actual energy. It's a real vibration that comes out of us. We create that, and our ancestors need that. And so that's why saying this mo'ku how every day at the ceremony is important. And it's not about just saying it, it's about believing it. Saying it with intention, giving money to it every single word and every single step <coughs> and so we have Wakia, we have sky father so our ancestors knew how to make it to where we can understand it right putting human emotions and characteristics onto these brilliant epic eternal Elemental nations. And so you have Wakia, who is everything we see and don't see above. Boundless. Akia, it goes on and on, limitless. A limitless energy of the sky, where we come from. Our creation story. Wakia. We have Papa Balinu, so just like how we have many Kai, Ku, Lono, Kanalo. There are also many Papa, many manifestations of the divine feminine. Papa Balinu representing the underworld, the underneath of the surface, that Ku Papa Ku of the Honua. These energies come together. These gods come together and have Mauna Kea. When we explain it like that and when we internalize it like that and metabolize it like that, it's a creation, all of everything, to make Mauna Kea according to our ancestors, according to the Melekoi Honor of Kauikeo Kamehameha. 
Wakea and Papahanaumu, the mother of most of the islands, not all of them. They come together and have Ho'ohoku Kalani, goddess of the star realm. So Papahanaumu, those hot spots, that fire that is so powerful, it can rise through pounds and pounds of water, of ocean, and meet air. These entities come together and create stars. Wakea now, because you know, Akupuna made it, so that people can remember it, yeah. So Wakea Papahana will put it into a stack is she's kicking it with somebody else. <laughs> she's not having it, so she goes to eat. And she kicks it with somebody else. I love the way that the you know, help us to remember. It's <laughs> so relatable, yeah? <laughs> Have we not learned by now? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so they're keeping okay. them on their own separately. And during that time, he, Wakea, meets with Ho'ohoku Kalani, and they have Halua Makalau Kapali. Wahano Iahilupa. Halua Makalau Kapali is born, stillborn, and buried at the east of the house, and out comes the first column. When you look at a placenta, does it not look like a column? Yeah? It's from the micro to the macro. We look at it with eight eyes. So, the first column comes forth. Wakea ho hoku kalani come together in a high palua named after his elder brother. Yeah? The first kanaka. From this kanaka comes a long way kanaka. If you are Hawaiian, if you have koko hapai, you are a descendant of Halo, of Ho'ohoku Kalani, of Papa Hanamuku, of Papa Balini, of Mauna Kea, of Wakea. How could you not feel your power after you know that? How can you not treat yourself with kindness and grace and love after you know what it took to make you? What it took to manifest you in this time how can you not feel air? And so, how long this eternal breath, this long breath, how long our breath that we have, have the air flowing through this vessel is a descendant of how long. Carrying on the inhale and the exhale, memories of old, old times from before and before and before. We come from a long line of people who never stopped speaking Hawaiian, no matter what happened to our lands and our people. We still descend from people who never stopped dancing hula who held on to their land even when it was sold off. We descend from people who decided to open those immersion schools and put those va'a back into the ocean. Who decided to open up halal again. And our children, the ones that are living right now, they are blessed with the work that you have done, what your parents have done, <coughs> to create a world where they can speak Hawaiian. From the moment they come into this world, there's some keiki that came in mana leo and would raise maka'olelo Hawaii, even after everything that has happened to us. We have children that can do that now that no holy, that no hula, 
and then experience that every single day in places like this. It took so much to get here. We are a continuation of our own creation story. We're still here. And this movement for Mauna Kea proves and affirms that, that we are still here. No should have been enough from the very beginning. Yeah. There has always been opposition to telescopes on Mauna Kea. It has not started just now. From the 1960s until now, somebody always said no. And so when I think about Hutu Mahalo, I think about those people who started in the beginning. People like Papa Soli and Pugi Pong, Kela Kishoda, people like that, who never stopped, who always knew Mauna Kea was sacred. And so when I explain sacred, people get afraid of that word, yeah? Must be talking about any kind, that kind. <laughs> sacred, a very simple definition is that it gives life. It gives life. Our kupuna knew of the ancient permafrost and the ice age that Mauna Kea holds. We are still fed by that, you know? Thousands of years of ancient, ancient water still feeding us today. They protected places like this, honored them, revered them, and made them couple for a reason, because they weren't just thinking about them and themselves. They were thinking about how will this bite be my children, their children, their children, their children. We're now coming back to that way of being and thinking, which is a kuana ike Hawaii, a kuana ike kahiko, that what we do will impact the next seven generations. So we have kuleana. Once we know what our mo'oku au is, we have kuleana, yeah? Mm -hmm. Aloha aina. Aina comes from the word aiga, family. Aloha Aina, to love land like we love family. We were long stripped from our own Aina. And we feel that here. Yeah? That intergenerational Eha is real. And that's why when I look at this movement, I feel we can heal through this. Through this Ho'i Ho'i Ea. When I think about Ho'i Ho'i Ea, I think about returning to land because that is returning to sovereignty for me. Individual and collective, from the micro to the macro. And so again, when you speak to your kiki about what is happening in the Mauna, I invite you to check in deeply. And I believe that all parents do that already. And when I hear them in the school, and I see the tears, and I see the want to talk about it, I invite you to talk about it as much as you can. If they don't want to talk about it, it's OK. But when they do, let them. That's what I've learned just from today, is to let them talk, to let them express, to let them feel because it's not easy to watch over 30 respected Hupuna get arrested over a live feed. To see batons, guns, and mace over their phones. And trust they see it all. They see it. And they feel it. It was scary. It was scary being there. And I will never forget it. I saw people that I've never seen cry bent over in a ha'u ha'u way when this was happening. Children on the sidelines feeling it, what it meant 
to watch this happen because they feel everything, their full sensory being. They don't know yet how to just hold cut up other things. You know, I haven't posted that video that I took when Uncle Billy was on the ground when he was begging me, begging for them to not hurt us. I didn't post it because you can hear me sobbing. I had to go across the street and run through police. I had to kill off Shona, who was crying from her soul. It's not easy to watch this happen, whether you're there or you're not. I think people are still healing and processing what that meant to watch people who have stood for Koho Olave, like Auntie Max, Kahali Leo, Walter Reddy, Loretta Reddy, arrested right in front of you. You couldn't do anything about it because they asked. They asked that they get arrested first. And so I'm going to tell you how it was in the beginning. The beginning of this front line. Because it was scary. We never knew when they were coming. Sometimes it was 2 o'clock in the morning. We heard a pool go off. Run. Get up. Run. Now. And you know what that reminded me of? The night that I got arrested. When I was on the mall now. And we thought that they were going to take down Halekuki at Imauna. We thought they were going to take Halekuki at Imauna down and that he along with them. So seven women went up to the Mauna. But it was so cold that we held our prayer in our cars until we had to get out. And I remember I, was, I had my eyes closed and I could see lights were coming at me to say, get up, they're coming. <clears throat> now, what it meant to be ripped apart in prayer in an old Wahi Mai chant that is calling to embody the gods. Imagine what that <clears throat> felt like to have police come and tear your hands apart. Same thing is still happening. Yeah? And so it's still the front line. And so we were sleeping in our tents and it was cold. And we would hear, they're coming. Get up, run. The kupuna would be the first ones there. How's that? Before everybody else, the kupuna are there. In their chairs, ready, set, go. <laughs> and oh my gosh, I know this is heavy, so this is sometimes I have to make a little bit light. Some kupunas were sitting there and put it on their lips there. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I put it on my lips every day. <laughs> they were at <laughs> That's the word in the kupuna. They come hao apaihi, adorned. So <laughs> the next night, that it was like 2 o'clock in the morning before I walked across, 30 seconds, eyeliner, and a good lipstick for the kupuna. <laughs> Some kupuna had more than one shade. <laughs> in a Ziploc bag, <laughs> passing, passing it around <laughs> before the police came. Yes. And that, to me, is how you make Makoko in any way that you need to feel powerful. If it means you need to put your lipstick on, like Auntie Luana Busby, who says, girl, when I put my lipstick on, I can do anything. <laughs> and so it's these moments that balance out the real heavy ones, yeah? These moments that make it real. And us, we come from a long lineage of laughter too. We have to, that's the way we process what's happening. So the Kupuna, two o'clock in the morning, they're ready to go. They're kako. The people that take care of them are also ready to go right behind them. Make sure they have water. Make sure they have food. <coughs> make sure they're covered. And I remember the first stand 
when they had a lane right across their laps. And they were all holding the lane together. They're still holding that lane. Even now, a month later, there's a lady right above their tent, and they're not moving. They're not moving because it's a microcosm, yeah? You know? The kupuna are teaching us how to stand for kupuna aina. How amazing is that? Kupuna like Auntie Pua kind of thing. Anna Kanushi was there, you know. When I first walked to the front line, I had no idea. And when I saw her, I fell to my knees. She's in her 80s. When she was arrested, she walked out with a walker and an ikumamo on her lips. So if she can be there every day, my goodness, we can be there too, eh? Yeah. So we're a month in. And I know that it can look like a celebration every day, but I always remind people that it is still the front line. The kupuna are still in the access road. They're still blocking access for TNT and huge trucks to get past. Above them are the police that we sometimes feed when they're hungry. Yo. They lost someone recently. Mm -hmm. It was heartbreaking to watch. And so what did we do? We invited them down. And we did a ceremony for them. And he poor kind of headed to the hub of the way to We never seen him do that before. We did Kaomi Nekala for his police officer to the Abuna Abdallah. That's for him. Because no matter what, we are Kanaka. It's not about sides, it's about choices. We cried and we embraced probably one of the most beautiful things I've ever seen in my life. Seeing how many people are coming from around the world to offer songs, letters of solidarity, flags. It's beautiful. <coughs> it's giving us a chance to know what it means to live in community again. To know what it means to live in a good way because we have couple of them firm commitment to Pano, to what is just, to what is true. Halimakua always used to say, love all you see with humility. Live all you feel with reverence. And know all that you possess with discipline. That second line always calls out to me, because again, it's not easy being on the front line. Sometimes there's anger, sometimes there's terror, there's sadness, but to feel all those things with reverence is a practice. Kabuaroha is a practice. It's a way of life. But we can't just say Kabuaroha without understanding what that means for you. Your own self-discipline, your own self-governance, and how you will come to the front line. And so what's beautiful is that people are coming with songs, with their dances, with their poetry. It reminds me of something very old. And I wonder if this happened before. If something was going down a long time before, what would happen? Okay? My first line is Kapu Kamaruna. Nobody is allowed on top. Because the issues of the Baal Kanaka do not belong in the Baal Akua. So when I was talking to Dati Pua, I was talking to her about the water. And she said, The mountain has the ability to filter the water. Yeah? We don't know how long it'll take. 
we don't know when we will see those chemicals that have been spilled on the Mona already. We don't know when we'll see how the Mona, the Mona filters that out. What she's really concerned about is the erosion. When you build on the top of a summit, as Paul said, it speeds up erosion. Look at Kaho'olabe after the atomic bomb cracked the water table. It is now hard pan. And all of those layers of Aina are on the reef. If you do not have a healthy reef, you don't have a healthy island, you know that. And so she says, doing this on the top of the mountain could quicken that process. And we may not see the outcome of that in our lifetime, but our children, their children, their children, they will. And so TNT would be the size of a stadium with the parking lot and the detonation underneath. Yeah, because they have to take bombs up to blow up the Aina to make sure it's secure because it's a very windy place, the Northern Plateau. And so it's, what's hilarious to me is they say, oh, we have a plan to return it back to how it was. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, that's when um, Lalaquila says, are you Pele? Right. <laughs> <laughs> Right. If you take pictures of every square foot and we put every single rock back, we take commission plans for the astronomy gods. And they have not taken one down yet. There's the <laughs> telescopes that don't even have. I just read that three million dollars have been spent already on law enforcement. Yeah, that's three years of what TNT promises our communities. It's 36 cents a student per year. I could give a rip about their million dollars. That's why we're in Elu. We have Hawaiians with PhDs, master degrees. They know how to get really great grants. <laughs> yeah? We don't need a million dollars from corporations that aren't even set up to actually help the people. No. We have countries, India, China, Japan, Caltech, all invested in a project that they have no idea is hurting us. And so when I think about if this, you know, people ask me like, well, what, what if TNT does go on? It would break people. I know it already. That's why it's not gonna go up. We're not moving. And I think that the countries are going to roll over it really soon. Because their kala is kind of spent. <laughs> I don't think the Japanese are going to be hanging out. They're like this, yeah? They're not going to be hanging out for two more years to build the layers. They're not going to do that. And now there's environmentalists in the Canary Islands that are saying no. <laughs> so I'm saying, use that technology that you have. Put TNT in the sky in a condensed version if you really need to. We do not need to keep on building on Earth right now. In general, look at it. It's not just TNT, it's everything. It's the rail. <laughs> it's everything that is going down in Hawaii. Do we need to continue to build things right now? Maybe not. Maybe look at what we have. Because we cannot turn back the hands of time. But we could do a little bit more to ensure that there's clean water. And so, Mauna Kea is calling the world through this incredible energy of love. 
and the world is watching. We're lucky now that we have live feeds. We're lucky now that we have really dope people that have amazing cameras that can take HD photos because now everybody is needing to see the pictures. They don't really want to see that old iPhone picture anymore. So that is in every single kind of tool that we have. So if an HD picture of a kupuna is going to call to the heart of somebody, ayo. If a live feed is going to call to somebody to chat and pray wherever they are, ayo. Because it's telling people that they can stand wherever they are and that their prayer matters. And so when I talked to the kids today, the kumas asked, what can you do? I said, if all you can do, if you do stand for the moment, because I go in there and I say, you're old enough to make your own decision, yeah? Right. Look up both sides if you need to make your own decision. I'm not here to tell you what to do. I'm not here to sway you. I'm not here to tell you that you're going to be a kiai one day. That's up to you. Go look it up. But you know, yeah, we tell them, what can they do? So if you want to stand with Mauna Kea, why don't you say Mauna Kea's name at 8, mm. 12 noon, mm. 6 p.m.? Yo. Yo. Some of them have to get up real early, like coming home at night. I was like, when the sun is rising and you're up on that bus yeah. from Kaaba, because <laughs> <laughs> it's far, yeah? <laughs> Mauna Kea, 6 o'clock. You know what I'm saying? Hey, I'm like, hey, I'm like, and he said, okay. Taught them, hey, I'm like, hey, kukuru. Somebody knows the, the kai already and the leo ala kai. Boom. When you guys are together in your class, send that energy. Post about it. Share your feelings about it. Because their voices matter. They're important. And so that's the one thing that I wanted to leave the classroom with today is that they would know that they're important and their thoughts are important. How they feel is important because it's teaching us how to hold space for one another again. For the kupuna all the way down to the kiki and then for ourselves. A practice that I'm trying to invite into my life right now is am I speaking to myself like I speak to the moment. I'm speaking to others the way that I speak to the moment. Yes. Am I? Not always. We're human, yeah. But the more we invite that kind of practice into our lives, the more we can have this kind of community that we're seeing on Mauna Kea everywhere. Because this is long standing. This is not just for Mauna Kea. I don't want to see us win and then go back to our regular. Yeah. We cannot, we have a chance now. So we have to take it. Or it's gonna pass us by. I believe this is what the legal Kalani prayed for. Mm -hmm. What Kalakaua wished he could see. What all of the Kamehamehas wished they lived through. What our Kukuna prayed for us. So how can we not take the moment and say, okay, I hear you, and I want to be a part of my community in a good way, where nobody owns earth, air, water, fire, but it is shared, where everyone is taken care of. Isn't that the place we want to create for our kiki? Mm -hmm. yeah. So we have it right here, right now. So it's important what we do with it on every single island. We can create the same energy right now, right here. When you go home, you can create that energy right in your home <coughs> because that's your first lahui. Yeah? And so, what a beautiful time to be alive. We get to see the huli. We get to see the opu, you know, and that chant that I did that Kalakoi Kono, it says, Opu wa e kamau na akea. The mountain blossomed forth. We're seeing the <coughs> prophecy of Kapihe come back around again. Ei hoa na oluna. 
When the time comes and the stars shine again, which to me is like when Hokulea came back in that Renaissance. Mm. That sacred knowing of how precious the next generations are will come back again. And then the heavens will burst forth once again with life. We're seeing that now. We're living that now. And it took a lot to get here. It took a lot to get here so we can celebrate that. Our very presence in this room is air. Our very presence in this room affirms that we are still Kanaka. We are still connected to Aina. And our voices matter. In a system that's not set up for us to win, we still matter because we matter to one another. Mm -hmm. It's an old paradigm that is going away now, around the world. And it was a heavy one, you know. It's not easy to look back at our history around the world. And we're seeing some of the ugliest things happening. The deportation of our cousins. The Mokuhon. The burning of the Amazon forest as we speak. The oil spills in big river waves that feed millions. We're seeing it all happen right now. What are we going to do with it? We have to believe that we have power. Power in Allah. Because war never worked. It never worked. It only created more dissonance. It never worked. Look at how Aloha is healing these things. Look at how Mauna Kea is calming back within us. You know, I shared it today with some of the classes where Kukia Imana came from. It came from right in my living room. My mom, she, we're writing this chat. Me, Kalei Nohea, Thay Korn, Kitty Eberlin, my mom. And we're writing this cool chat to rise. It's back in, I think. 2013, when we were going into our first contested case here in Japan. And my mom said, we need something for stand strong like the Mauna. And I thought of my ancestor's name. Umi huru maka o kalani kia i mauna o abini. We were writing a ku chant, so, well, what about ku kia i mauna? For old tutu man. She said, well, yeah, ku kia i mauna. And we said, Kuan Wei to cast that rainbow bridge of connection. Not just to one another and not just to the mama, but to everyone. Kukia imauna, Kuan Wei Nue. So you know that when, you know, the Kupunas come and give you little things through their names or through their mo'olelo, sometimes you learn more about that as you live. So we saw a whole rising of Kukia Imona and what that meant in 2014 and 2015. And now, when we see this Pu'u Honua, we talk a lot about how Ka'abu Manu made herself a Pu'u Honua. Her own body, she declared her body a place of safety. So I was looking at the Mauna one day, and I was thinking about that, and I was thinking about how the people say, ah, ku I call mama, ku I call papa, just like your mom, just like your dad. You look just like them. And I thought, cool, kia imona. To not just stand to protect the mountain or stand as a kia i of this place, but to embody that. That when we say, cool, kia imona, we become that. Our very body 
becomes a protection on the care. We see that in the way that we link arm and arm. We see that in the you know, we see that in the people that strap themselves to the cattle guard for eleven hours. We see it in every single person that comes to protocol, in every single person that cooks food. We see it in the people that come to do the jobs that nobody wants to talk about. There's a man that comes every single day to empty the porta potties for free. He says that this is the way that I can contribute. We have one brada that from the very beginning came every single day to dump trash for free. Just up the mountain, grab the trash, boom, down the hill. We have people recycling, composting. It is ma'e ma'e law. When my mom says that one grain of rice, she is for real. She picked up a grain of rice the other day. <laughs> Legit. It was on the ground and she picked it up, not one grain of rice. Because it's ma'e ma'e. That is how our people are. And those conditions are hard to live in. Obviously, I'm 50 shades of brown. <laughs> I'm so close to so wearing the rays of carnival lenny that we try to every day. We're aging a little bit, okay? <laughs> so give me your best because <laughs> I'm here for it. <laughs> um, okay, for real. But <laughs> um, people are right there. And they're not leaving. And so when you guys want to come, and if you do, know that there's a place for you. Always. No kahalu. There is a place for everyone. And that is what Mauna Kea is teaching us now. And so, thank you for coming to my TED Talk. Questions or anything you want to hear about specifically? I think um, the question is now who owned the road? <laughs> 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 now, mom, the Did you guys see when that whole pula came with Kadimis? In the sky was a whole odd wispy, feathery, kahili cloud coming out of Mama. And Auntie Pua Kanahane said, oh, she said, forget who I know, she said, Nana, even when we look up, our prayers are working. We're seeing how our holy, and what we're asking for is working. On the top of that kahili cloud was a ring around the sun, a lohuanu. It doesn't happen often. So now mom comes that all of and we even have a mailbox. But if you walk down with that mailbox, I was like, he better he better. Because it made it legit, we have our own bike. Yeah. So you can send aloha letters to Kupuna too. So right now we said that that road, Kia Iia in the Kupuna. The state, what's on DHHL land if you want to get there? It's DHHL land. Thank you. Or whatever the name is. What's the name? I love. 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 DOT, Department of Transportation, jurisdiction. Those paperwork never went through. So we still are on Department of Hawaiian Homelands. But I think we just take that out. We're still on our own land. <laughs> yeah? yeah? But according to all that Opuni kind, I am not the person to ask the Opuni questions. <laughs> 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 Um, this question might be a little bit blocky, but how do Kanaka navigate through their 
faith and belief systems when they're raised Christian, but come to Mauna and witness what's happening there. I've come across a lot who have felt conflicted. It's true. There's a lot of ho'olani is happening in the ceremony. <laughs> a lot of amazing grace, man. You know? And what I love, though, is that we all can gather in love and respect. Listen deeply to what they say, because that is how they know how to honor. That's how they were raised. Not everybody was raised. All pagan, like my mom raised me. <laughs> you know, a lot of people were raised up in that halakune every Sunday. Because that is the owl of the manava, yeah? It happened to us. That was a part of it. They came over here and they said, we're going to turn all your R's to L's, all your T's to K's. This is the new Vaibala, which you go through and like the camp the most opportune time when the couple system was all getting broken and everybody was, you know, in that. And so that's, you know, it's the Aung oh, Okamanaba. It happens. So we had people from the Haukam. They're Haikure. And they came in with what they know. And they, that's how they know how to honor. That's okay. For me, when I'm looking at that, they're sharing their most sacred songs. They're sharing their most sacred belief in something that kept them alive, that kept them going. If the Baibala, the Baibala Hamunale kept them going, kept them believing in something, that's how they survived. That's how they're here today. Hey, you know. But you gotta work that out within yourself, yeah? When you look at Aina, you know, people always are like, oh no, the time of God is Paul, and oh, scary, yeah? Because that is a story that was told unto us over and over and over again, you know? So that fear happens, that fear develops. Ooh, I don't want to talk about it. I don't want to talk about the spookies and the spirits. Um, but we all descend from that. And when we're really looking at it, when we really look at what these gods represent, they represent elements. And so when the kupuna, when they created space for these elements to be revered as gods, it's because they're sacred. They give us life. And so you don't have to believe in Wano or Ku or Kanaloa or Kane. But do you believe that water gives life? Do you believe that the fire is a pedic of life? And I am. It's about knowing to me. And having a respect for. You don't have to believe in the Kaila Kadiko to be a Namauna. You don't. It would be pretty amazing if you could see why. If you could see why the kupuna would make it so that we could have human characteristics, nomenclatures too, for all of these gods, so that we would feel connected to them. All of these elements, we would feel that we're not separate. We would come to the aina knowing that the aina is more powerful than our one being. And so to know that, and then work it out within yourself. Do you feel a little hooky? Because you've been raised in church and raised, you know, in that way. Do you feel a little hooky? Figure out where it's coming from. Maybe it's coming from an old way of thinking. Maybe it's coming from fear. Maybe it's coming from maybe not understanding something fully. Then have a conversation. Open up talk about it. Because no, for me, when I hear that, I want to hold them in that. Hold space for that. Because everything matters. So if somebody has that kind of thinking, it's okay. It's okay. You don't have to believe in the old way of life to stand for a mountain. 
You just have to believe in water and cool it out. And when the water, when we meet at the water, conversation happens, healing happens. Our brothers and sisters from Aotearoa tell us that. That's their Olamu Mokeo. So first, if you love water, let that be a conversation opener. Let that heal all the places that break the key. It's okay to feel it. Let's love each other through it. Um, I think the only question for me is, um, where do we go? From here? Where do we go from here? So, we're on the mountain. Uh, you said we don't. And I agree with you. We don't want to just go back to how we were uh, before. And I have an idea of where we should go. Um, but I, I want to know what people think. What, like, even on the Mona, like, what's the general idea? From if or no, when this TMT thing is gone, and it's not, it's not built, and the bill is not, or whatever else is up there, and it's not going up. What do we do? Do we um, try get in the system, or do we try create something new? Or I love this question. <laughs> <laughs> For me, when I look at it's every day, huh? It's a day by day. We learn about each other every day. We learn about what works, what doesn't work. So it's about these little kinks, yeah, of how to even live together first, how to treat each other well, how to remember what it feels like to live in community, to wake up next to camps of other people. It's micro to macro, yeah? So it starts for me when I'm looking at it. Small. To be. So right now, my focus is Mauna Kea. Let's keep the mountain safe. Let's do what we got to do right now. This is just for me. While having conversations like these. Because this needs to happen now. Well, there is no, there's no harm being done right now to the Mauna by TMT. This is a time to talk about these things. You know, these are the times to have conversations with the Vanao that our whole focus is still on this here movement so when I look at it how can we go from small to big so it starts with in yourself first yeah how can you step into community again Lahui again work on yourself first so that when we have these conversations there's openness there's willingness to listen Willingness to come part in the L4, micro to macro. Once we can do that, that's why ceremony is so important. Discipline. Every single day there's discipline, there's intention, centering of yourself so that when these conversations do happen, we're not all fighting. We're not all wanting to be heard and only us be heard. We work together. So I think that we're doing it already. It's happening already. We're seeing it in the micro, right? Of course, this is something that we all would like to see spread throughout Hawaii. How do we acquire land back so that we can live like this again? How do we figure out where our waters are coming from so that we can free them and live in a place where it's sustainable? All of these things are good questions to ask. But are we ready to have that conversation first? Check in. Are you even ready to have it yet? So that's that's my first thing. Centered, open, willing to believe in a way of living like this. Because nothing can happen without the belief. So let's take the time to learn that while we're on Mama Camp. And then as you're away, you know, do what you gotta do. It's a time to ponder that. Work on it for yourself. See what it's like in your own family. To instill a couple of love within your own households, within your own kula. Start from small. Because we could think big. We could think really big. 
What would it be like to go in this like who was going to tell us to start from the beginning? Take what we know works from the past, our knowledge of what has worked in the past. What works for us now? How can we balance that together? And I think that takes practice, and it takes experience, and it takes living it. So we can't just plan it all out and have, what is it called, a working business document <laughs> on how <laughs> to make this all happen again. Sometimes it needs to be lived. That's what I learned, because it was my like fear before going up. I was like, oh my gosh, the police have had four years to think about what they're going to do. While they were doing that, we were in contested case hearings, we were going around the world trying to figure out, trying to stay alive and feed ourselves in the poverty that we live in, which is the truth, doing all of these things, yeah? They said, oh my gosh, we didn't even plan. And then I forgot the mayo of our people. How can you forget that, yeah, but I was stressed out. I'm like, oh my god, I don't know how many tactics we're doing. Sorry. Look at what happened within days. We had bathrooms, we had a kitchen. We had donations, we had tents. People gave freely. We had it set up and we were safe. Within days, Kamehameha, World Heart of Kamehameha was there declaring this a pu'uhonua. That is a mai yo, the akamai nani ke akamai koka kopoe. It's not just Hawaiians, yeah. You don't have to be Hawaiian to care about Mahonkea. I always say to the non-Hawaiian people, you drink of the water of this place, you eat of the food. You have responsibility to uphold the well-being of this land. We all do. We all do. It's gonna take everybody. So I know that didn't need to go to answer the whole question, but like, <laughs> I feel like it's another experience, yeah? Let's try and live it. And let's go from there. Yeah. That's my suggestion. Yeah. Any more questions? Call my Yaka who Protocol. Oh, I say aha. Uh aha. -huh. Uh -huh. Like aha. Uh -huh. Because that's where we do the protocol. Call aha. Yeah. Uh -huh. Ceremony. So we'll have your own aha uh -huh every day, yeah? And that's what's amazing about this time. You guys, you have the packet already? I don't have, do you have the packet? Does anybody have the packet of chance that is turn on your airdrop? Yeah, like, like, airdrop it right now. Airdrop it right, right, right now, y'all. Let me look at the many times threads. Hold on. <laughs> That's real. <laughs> Which one was on the Puhono website? On the website? So, um, so that's my one of mine. Mm -hmm. uh, and we're actually coming up this weekend. And I mean, I love the Mauna, especially from Papahana Mokwake and that sense of connectivity, but our true underlying commitment. Gil, just to claim me. Is that couple in our house, in our lives, with each other. And are there conversations like you, that you're hearing of people while they're there, like making those connections kind of like in real time? Are you, are you feeling that? So the question was about Kapu Aloha and, you know, having that practice in our households. Because, you know, it's in our households that we, like, lose it, yeah? And we, like, show, like, the very worst of ourselves. Part of the AA group is... <laughs> like, lava coming out of my eyes. You know? <laughs> We're human. We're real. Um, I see that happening more, again, as a lived experience. Like, again, it's a practice, yeah? So when you come to the moment, of the year, you're always calling in your highest self, your best conduct. Treating these elders like kings and queens. Are you treating your own elder at home like that? Like as you would on the mama. You know, so these questions are real to ask yourself. Am I doing that? It's not always. They're even home, you know? No. But like, these are the things to start to incorporate. Like, just for myself, my own personal relationship. 
I called for a couple of Baha'i in my own personal relationship. Because it's easy to take out all of our frustration and our anger on the ones that are closest to us. So again, a couple of lines, discipline. Discipline. Live all you feel with reverence. Know all that you possess with discipline. Because you cannot just be turning around all your any kind anymore. You cannot. We lived like that for too long because you know what? We didn't know what to do with our pain and our trauma. And that's real. And now, now we have the opportunity to have conversations like this and heal with each other. So my, my thing for my, my own life is before I respond or react, I ask myself, how can I respond better? Again, it goes back to how can I talk to others like I talk to the mama? How can I talk to my beloved like I talk to the mama? Am I always doing that? No, because we have many different ways of expressing. But the more we even think about that, the more we can implement it within our own homes. Because it's not a kaila kahiko thing that is something to be scared of. It's a way of life that is rooted in aloha. And so before I get real angry or real nuts at something, I think, well, where is that reaction coming from? And how can I express what I need to say so it can be received? When we say hold space within our own families, what does that mean? How can we hold real space for somebody that's feeling something? How can we make time? So again, it's about self-discipline, self-governance. What who teaches us? What standing teaches us? And so I know it's like there's a lot of big ideas that goes from small to big all the time. But every question we ask, we can think about, how can I apply it to me in my life? How, I, how can I make this movement a part of my everyday, part of my family? And I think it's just for me, when I really feel about it, it's the aha, it's the protocols for me to chant and sing with my community every day brings us closer. When you are dancing Allah with 200 people strong, you get closer, closer in intention. When you chant a whole light every day, asking for wisdom, asking for guidance together. You know my parents, every lonely kamakahiki, we would pray together and we would eat ceremonial foods. That's what brought us together. So feeling like you want to bring this kind of energy into your home. Do these protocols with your kids. Learn them your son and do them with your kids. It brings you closer. And I know they're probably like, oh my god, I don't want to do this. You know, like, seriously? I was like that. I was like, I don't want to do this right now. I'm so glad my mom said to that. You're doing this right now. Great, like that. And I'm like, okay, fine. And you know what I'm saying with the cake is, and with the youth that I'm going to talk to them is, I say, I invite you to come. I invite you to come and chat with me. I invite you to sing with me. Let's share in that moment. So that puts it on them. It puts it on them. Well, then I do the whole hu'au before that so they know. Kuleana. <laughs> like, boom, this is where you come from. And then how are they going to tell you no? Like, I don't want to be a white. After you guys said you're a descendant of Mauna Kea, you know, like they're like, <laughs> like you're correct, yeah. You know? So, like, these things do happen. When you were in Korea Island, you said to that. Oh, wow, you're throwing me back. <laughs> yeah, okay, so. How was it? <laughs> wow, Six I like months. that. Seven. Seven months. Yeah. Um, I spent uh, seven months out of Holaniku, also known as Kire, Atal, the last Atal in the Hawaiian chain. Um, yes. Oh, it was really powerful. I was young. Yeah, seven months, okay. <laughs> 
birds. <laughs> oh, and I forget. Just real quick. I was an emergency hire. The botanist didn't want to be there. She was like, absolutely not. This is not for me being on this island with four other people. <laughs> no. So she was going to go home with the Coast Guard boat. And so they're like, hey, we need somebody. And I got the email out of all the people. Yeah. Because you look at me and like, very, can you really rough it for seven months out of the wilderness? But yes, I can. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay. And it was hard. <laughs> like, you know, you do not. Okay. But um, I had two weeks to prepare. People have like months to prepare for seven months stays. There is no Target. There is no Costco. <laughs> nothing. You bring everything. And guess what? I no, left my panties no, I <laughs> in the freezer because you have to freeze everything to make sure no seeds and like anything new bringing to the island. I left my underwear in the freezer the night before because I was a like, hot. I was like, I gotta pack these buckets. Everything goes in buckets. Oh my gosh, okay. It, I wish I knew what I know now. <laughs> <laughs> Lucky thing, my catmate was nice enough to get me free. I had three. And then I had some bathing suit bottoms. <laughs> we make it work. Talk, talk about roughing it. Roughing it, that's what it is. Okay, so my time out there was really focused because I spent a whole semester researching Kuwait Helani. And so Kekwa Wakiki Loi did. Yeah, I'm so dope, yeah. Yeah, Kekwa Wakiki Loi, he, he found this genealogy for Kuwait Lai Kabaha. And he went and he lined up all of the islands to what he found in this genealogy to what he believes is the name. That's how we get Kuwait Helani. That's how we get Kuala And so I spent, I went to Midway twice, to Kuwait Helani twice before I went to Kuala And I went with a class. It was all connects back around to Mama Kei, I promise. <laughs> so I went with a class and we could only speak a lot of Hawaii. We did all of our research, a lot of Hawaii. And what I researched was Kalikau. Lamentation chants was heavy. I found a lamentation chant, a kanikau, that was written like a conversation between Kamehameha Ikolo, Eha, and Ilima. Oh. All preparing Kamehameha Ilima to come, to pull. It was beautiful. And so they had these names, ancestral names, ancient names of these Aina Kupuna. So I went out there and I was one of the first language speakers to go out there for a whole season and it was the first Lolo Ika Makahiki season. I turned 23 there. And I would love to do a whole sharing about that experience. But I was one of the first people to go back in ceremony there. And so I built an ahu out of koa in every cardinal direction and in the middle. I asked if it was okay, and I did that because my parents taught me to. And I fed those apple offerings of pot kai, of ling. And I thought about how long it's been since that has happened. How long has it been since somebody that could speak Hawaiian went there? How long has it been since an albatross got a traditional welcome? Mm. So when the first Blackfoot landed, I made myself unseen and I chanted softly. When everybody left, I just stayed. And I thought about how long it took that money to get there, miles and miles over the Bering Sea. How long did it take? And I chanted to Mauna Kea for me because we were already in the contested case. That's when Poli Ahui Kikup went on the radio. I wasn't even here. Mm. It went on the radio and they asked for people to buy it to raise money for the protect Mauna Kea. <coughs> we said Mauna Kea's name on Polaniku. 
and I remember seeing the clouds form in the sky, just like those feathers, just like the mama. And while I was there, it's a whole long story, but while I was there, towards the end, my mentor in music passed away. Okapuna Kili Homalu. And again, how we wait, because there was no way for me to get back. So it started with a kani kau, and it ended that way. I wrote my first kani kau on that island, and I chanted it there. And I miss it. I miss it over there. I haven't been back because I am here for the Mauna. But at the same time that I chanted, Haku Koi, on Holani Ku, my mom was at the top of Mauna Kea. That Kani Kau that I wrote, she took to the top of the Mauna before she took it to Kalapana. And she chanted it to the Mauna and then took it down and presented a traditional Kani Kau to Uncle Puma's family, the Kili'iho Omalu Ohana. I was really young then, but I was so grateful for what my parents taught me. We did a whole aha where she, she sent me on email a whole list of chants that they were doing so I could do it at the same time. So seven months, a real deepening of myself and shedding of things that I don't need to carry anymore. Seeing Lomoi Kamakahiki come. There was one time I was on that atoll by myself. <coughs> Everybody went out to do a dolphin survey and I was sick. I'd never been somewhere completely alone, but not alone. In my life. I will always cherish that time because I feel like it prepared me for what is happening now. The kupuna told me the other day when I was praying that our prayers come back to us. Don't just call upon, you know, the ancestors and call upon Hule with the Almakua without thinking about how many times you've already done it. That the Pule that we've already uttered comes back to us. So when I chant Ehomai or I do the Omoko on the Mauna, I think about when I did it on Honaniku. I think about when I did it at Mount Shasta or Mount Brigi in Switzerland. I think about all the places that we've done it. And that we've uttered these chants. We can call them back as protection now. But there's mana in that. Every single prayer, every single chant, every single dance that we've already done, we can call it back. And that's what that Aina taught me. Long, long answer. But, you know, we're full of stories now. That's the way I've heard I know, the chance probably have to go, yeah. Yeah, yeah my son leaves. He left to the to go to Kerry. Can I have his email? I would love to write to him. Oh, yeah. You know, while I was there, I you, named. I'm, I'm the captain. And you, you, would be, you remember you. Everybody on the island, they wound me. <laughs> I remember that. I got a picture of that. <laughs> I, like, I would like to see it. Please leave an email. I would love to write this. Um, I know that you guys probably have to go. Uh, can I sing to you your song? Yeah, And it's from the Ahamakua, the parents. Here. <laughs> I got them done for this music video that I'm making. Did you guys see the picture of the hundreds of Bahine? Yeah. It's gonna be in my music video. So I'm gonna see it as a friend. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What do you guys want to hear? Together we rise or warrior rising? It's not to be good. Yeah. Yeah. 
as long as you don't have spray. Okay. So I'm just gonna say Kukia Imauna and then we'll do us Kukia Imauna together. Oh. 